Hey gang, Bronco Carl 92 here. So for today's video, I'm going to show you how to install a fluid damper, performance vibration dampener on a 12 valve Cummins engine. Here's what we're going to be putting on. We're going to be replacing our stock damper with this Vibratech TVT um, performance uh, harmonic balancer that's made by Fluid Damper. Um, the kit that you uh, would get would come with um, the damper, obviously, um, a sensor relocation bracket, and a wiring harness extension if, um, if that's needed. Um, and this is for uh, Cummins engines from uh, 1989 to 1998 uh, with 12 valve engine um, I'm also going to be replacing uh, my belt tensioner uh, while I have the belt off because the one I have squeaks and uh, here's a few of the tools uh, we'll use a um, fan wrench um, a hammer to knock the fan wrench um, 15 millimeter socket on the vibration dampener bolts um, the breaker bar is for the belt tensioner and uh, a couple of uh, various sockets here to install the uh, the sensor. So let's get you set up and show you what we got going on. From everything I've read, the, uh, the larger the diameter of the uh, harmonic vibration dampener on the engine uh, definitely has a big effect on how smooth the engine will be. I know that if you take a uh, dampener from a 6BT and you put it onto a 4BT, for example, uh, the 4BT actually has a smaller damper, um, it will smooth the motor out quite a bit. The fluid damper with its um, silicone uh, inertia ring inside Will, uh, will definitely help in addition to its um, additional mass. Um, I saw a video where uh, the guy shows uh, before and after and you can see the engine actually will um, maintain its RPM much longer with the, uh, with the added inertia. I mean that makes plenty of sense to me. Um, it's with the, uh, with the heavier damper. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, this is a good bird's eye view of what we're going to be doing. I'm going to do uh, most of the work from underneath the truck uh, because it would actually be a lot easier for me to get to the uh, bolts on the dampener from downstairs. But um, I'm going to remove the, uh, the fan because it's kind of in the way. So basically, the easiest way to do this is just put your fan wrench on here. Couple little smacks. And just wind the fan off. I, I lube the threads on the uh, the fan bearing before I replace this fan clutch and uh, 
that's good to do because that way if you ever have to take your fan off it comes off as easy as that sometimes you really have to fight them I'm sure someone's gonna say oh my fan never comes off that easy just gotta kind of snake It's also a good idea that when you put your fan aside that you stand it up in the position that uh, it's normally sitting so the viscous fluid doesn't settle. I don't suppose it matters or not, but I'm going to remove the bolts from the, or at least crack the bolts on the uh, damper loose before we take the main belt off. So I'm going to go down and do that right now. Okay, so the engine wants to turn while I'm trying to get these bolts loose. They are torqued to 135 foot-pounds. So I'm going to climb under the back and I'm going to install my barring tool into the flywheel access hole and uh, hopefully that can hold the engine to get the bar up against the, the side of the engine block. That'll keep the engine from rotating. So let me climb under there and do that. I'll put you back on in a sec. Okay, so our barring tool's in place. I can crack our bolts loose. Okay, so we're going to remove our drive belt now. I would strongly suggest either drawing a picture, taking, taking a photograph of it, or make sure that you have a label on your, on your core support. I have a belt rooting diagram, so I don't have to worry about that. It's pretty simple on this engine, but... So, just basically go this way. Lift the belt off. It. Now it looks like the tensioner that's on here has a 3 8 square hole in it. Um, the replacement one I have has a half inch, but with an adapter, anything can, anything's possible, right? Let's put the belt aside. I'm actually going to take it off because we're going to be changing the tensioner out. This belt's in great shape, so we're going to reuse that. Okay. Next, we'll get the balancer off now that the bolts are loose. Now, the air gap for the sensor should be measured um, if you don't have the spec. I have the spec, it's 50 thousandths. We're removing the sensor anyway. The bolts are out. A couple little twists. All right, so just so you get a little idea, here's our stock damper, and here's our replacement damper. This here weighs, I don't know, maybe 15 pounds. This one weighs quite a bit more. Let's weigh them. Okay, so here's our stock damper. I said it was about 15 pounds, I think. Let's see. No, it's about 11. 10, 10 pounds, 12 ounces. And our fluid damper. 24.1. So, say about 14 pounds heavier. 13 pounds. Um, but like I said, there's, uh, there's silicone in here that um, 
it basically causes the balancing effect to happen and the vibration cancellation. So uh, hopefully we'll uh, we'll get some good results out of this. So next uh, we need to remove the RPM sensor. Let's go do that now. All right. So you can see up there's our stock vibration uh, damper RPM sensor location um, with the larger diameter. Obviously it's uh, going to hit that. So the sensor gets removed and I believe gets relocated to on this side of the engine over here which is kind of off the screen right now but so anyway it's just the 13 pair of 13s Now I imagine I'm wondering if those studs have to stay or if they have to go. I'll have to take a look at the instructions. Alright, so there's the sensor. There's a standoff. And then we just have to remove this from up top. There's a little clip up there. Plug it. Put this bolt back in place. I think maybe what the idea is is to remove the two standoffs for the original sensor and replace them with the bolts that we pull out of the cover that we remove on the bottom side to install the new sensor bracket. I'll have to check the instructions just to make sure if that's true or not. Sounds good to me though. Our sensor's plugged in over here. It looks like there's another little bracket holding it in place. I think I would remember this from when I put this engine in here two years ago. Almost three years ago now. One sensor. All right, so I found this kind of interesting. I uh, removed the um, the two studs that held the um, RPM sensor in place. One's got a short shank, and the other's got a long shank. So we have a short shank bolt here that held the clip in place for the speed sensor um, wiring. And then I removed two of the bolts from the lower cover. I've actually already put the long one in, and the long one is the same length. so. It's nice you can just take the bolts from the one place and put them somewhere else these don't hit the balancer but it just looks kind of weird just have these two long studs sticking out with nothing attaching to them so swap out this tensioner. Alright, so our tensioner is only held in place with one 
bolt. It's a uh, 14 millimeter head. Break that loose. I just hate squeaky belt tensioners. I mean, you can hear a squeak over a diesel engine. It's got to be pretty bad, I guess. I don't know if it's the plastic pulley. The things looks all. Um, I don't know how do you describe it? Definitely not a smooth. Well, it's smooth, but definitely not even. Looks like it might even have a lump in it. So, anyhow. New one was cheap enough. So there's a little pin. There's a pin that sticks out that engages into the into the housing there to keep everything from spinning once the bolt's tight. I gotta do the tensioners on our Yukon also. I don't know what it is, but these things, they just don't seem to last very long. Okay. All right, good. So, uh, go back underneath and let's get our, our new damper installed and uh, our sensor relocation bracket and see if we have to modify this harness. Okay, we're gonna stick our damper in place. I just get it over the pilot of the crank. And then grab a bolt. So once you have a bolt in place, you can wiggle the damper and turn it. So it engages into one of the holes. You can thread it in by hand. It seems that I can't fit my hand in there between the fan shroud and the damper now, so I'm going to have to feed these in from the top. Now, I wanted to replace these fasteners with ARPs, but I forgot to order them and I wanted to get this video done so we can go back and do them another time I guess um, fluid damper recommends that if you're gonna run the motor over 3500 rpm I guess like in a pulling or competition type situation they strongly recommend drilling and, and pinning this baby to the crankshaft. My rev limit's set at 3,200. I'm not um, planning on going any further than that with, uh, with the engine. It's an automatic. These things kind of run out of steam. Much over three grand anyway, so I don't think it's, uh, there's any point to doing that. I'm gonna run all these down and then I'll put you back on when I torque them. All right, so I got the uh, belt back in place now. So let's pull the tensioner this way. This is where three hands would really be cool, but 
All right, and just make sure that you have it in all the grooves. belt was caught on one of the bolt heads over here and that probably could have been ugly on engine start okay so now that the belts in place we can torque the uh, damper bolts to 135 foot pounds let me get a torque wrench and I'll put you back on okay so our barring tool is still in place okay I recommend doing a cross pattern too Okay, I strongly suggest you can remove the barring tool immediately after doing this so you don't forget about it. Because if you do leave it in place, ugly things will happen when you go to start. The first thing we need to do is install these two long bolts. I guess I would call them a standoff. So I've already removed two bolts out of the well the one out of the timing cover tin and then the one out of the timing cover itself so there's one Next, we need to put this bracket in place. This is what actually holds the sensor. Okay, this one. Pretty good view of my neck there. And of course, it says to leave everything finger tight until everything's uh, established. seem like they're really long. Okay. So now our sensor is here and we're supposed to check if the wiring needs to be extended. So I'm just going to put the sensor in place with one Bolt just to kind of hold it there. Oh, it's not fun. So, I would have to say yes going to have to be extended. Mm. Our 
or maybe not, I don't know. Yeah, it's a little too, a little too tight for my liking, so. Now the question is, is do I just cut this plug off and use their new plug? It seems silly to put two connections in one place. I could just extend the wiring on the sensor too. I think that would be a little cleaner. All right, let me go do that. Okay, so here's what I got. I'm looking at this uh, wire on the sensor here and it's like a flat ribbon cable. I really don't want to cut that. What I do have is the old engine wiring harness from this engine when I got it. I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to take this pigtail off the other one and just cut it back longer. I'll just extend this part here. I think that's what I'm going to do. Alright, so I've got the sensor uh, loosely mounted onto the bracket. I haven't extended the harness yet because I want to have everything set in place and my harness secured to the side of the block and then I'll figure out how much I'm going to extend this pigtail over here. So the uh, factory owner's manual says to um, use a brass feeler gauge, 50 thousandths. I don't have a brass feeler gauge. I'm assuming they want you to use brass because it's non-metallic. Um, so I folded this cardboard up and measured it. It's 50 thousandths. So since the sensor is magnetic, it's stuck to the balancer right now. Okay, so now I suppose if it's a little loose, that's okay. I mean, the run out on this balancer, I'm sure, is very minimal. This sensor basically is just for your tack anyway. It has no real engine function. pretty good. Let me get this harness secured to the block and then we'll uh, do this pigtail. We'll put our fan back on and we're going to be done. All right, so you can get a better idea of what we've done down here now. There's our sensor installed. You can see the air gap between it. Um, I hooked the harness. I've bolted it in two places to the timing cover and that's where it is now. And as you can see, our connector here is just a little short so we're gonna clip this off and um, I mean if you don't have an extra connector I would ex suggest actually just extending this and not using the the two-piece um, weather pack connection that they provide only because why have two connections when you can only have one so let me uh, get that pigtail that I've made actually I have it right here so here's the pigtail I'll just attach on here like that and then we're just gonna splice it into here we'll put a little loom over it and uh, we'll be done okay so I cut my plug off I uh, basically staggered the lengths on this and uh, we're gonna solder it together now Like I said, this is, I think, the cleanest way to do this. You could actually just extend these wires, too. I mean, it's nice that they they provide you that, that connector and everything, but it doesn't seem to, practical to me to have two connections. And I don't know if their intention is that you actually cut the plug off the, uh, the original sensor or not. To me, it doesn't really look like uh, 
would be easy to splice that together since those aren't color coded. All right, so now slide the heat shrink down over the connections. This is um, marine style heat shrink. It's got glue in it. And really in any sort of engine compartment situation, I would recommend using this stuff. I believe this is what an OE would use. So I'm just get a heat gun. Of course you could use a small torch or matches or lighter. I like to use the heat gun on the stuff with the glue. And that way I can just heat it until I see the glue ooze out. Finally, we'll put some split loom over the wire here to basically protect it from abrasion. Make it look kind of, I guess, factory. That's that. All right, lastly, we'll put our fan back in place. Carefully move it into place. And sometimes it goes on real easy without too much grief. Other times you might have to fiddle around with it a little bit to get it to go right. Okay. give it a little love tap. You don't have to beat the hell out of it. What's that? All right, let's crank her up and see how it is. So here's our before shot. We're gonna bring her up to uh, to red line. Okay, this is the after shot. Let's see how it revs up. Feels pretty good. Let's go see how it dries. I'll tell you, it definitely already feels different. God, the difference is like amazing. I never really thought that replacing a heart vibration dampener on the engine would, like my foot doesn't buzz anymore. That's crazy.
Alright, well I guess I give the fluid damper a thumbs up. Alright, so that was actually pretty easy to do. Um, as you saw in the video, um, I was pretty impressed with the overall drivability of the truck. Um, my foot doesn't vibrate underneath the accelerator pedal anymore and the truck just seems to rev better. So um, I think that was an all-around win. So I picked that up uh, directly from Fluid Damper. It was a uh, part of their scratch and dent inventory. Um, they claim that uh, their quality control standards are pretty high and if there's a couple scratches on it, they don't want to sell them. So I saved myself about $200 uh, that way, buying it directly from them. Um, I was happy to find it, or actually lucky to find it on eBay that way. So, Anyhow, um, as always, thanks for watching Bronco Carl 92, and uh, we'll catch you again soon. Take care.